What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hog Sports, H-A-W-G Sports.com. Got a busy show for you today. It's a busy month of June for the Razorbacks, if you're in any sport. But we're, of course, going to talk about the major sports. Razorback football has a ton going on with official visitors coming in. It's camp season for the Hogs. Also, summer workouts, big part of their program, their offseason program. Uh, Razorback basketball setting their foreign tour. Uh, they've got a bunch going on with Razorback basketball. They're doing summer workouts right now with 11 newcomers and, of course, the Diamond Hogs. We're going to have Andrew Ellis join us today. So a lot of you aren't familiar with Andrew. Andrew has been covering uh, Arkansas sports with us for the past year, just went full-time with us. He's in Omaha, so we're going to get a breakdown from him. Also, Danny West is going to join us to talk the latest in recruiting, all that and more on today's episode of Hog Sports Live. And before we get started, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. If you haven't followed the page yet, become one of 85,000 Razorback fans to follow the page. All our free content goes on the Facebook page. Of course, this show streams live on it as well. Also, throw us a like on the video if you haven't done so already. And throw us a thumbs up on Facebook, or excuse me, on YouTube. Throw us a thumbs up or a like or whatever you call it on both those channels. And uh, subscribe to the YouTube page if you haven't done so already. Make sure to hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos here. Also available on Apple Podcasts. It's been a while since anybody's thrown us a review on Apple Podcasts, so if you haven't done so already, throw us that five-star rating and leave a review. Let other people know what to expect from the show. Share the content with somebody else on any of those platforms. If you got a dad or an uncle or anybody that doesn't know about the show you think might like it, uh, reach out to them for us. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast, Hog Sports. is just $1 right now for your first month, HAWGsports.com. As I mentioned, you think it's an off season, but there's so much going on. It's just the season outside the season, really, for all these sports. So uh, you make sure to go to hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com, part of the 24-7 Sports Network, and sign up if you haven't done so already. All right, get your questions in. We'll get to those at the end of the show. Also, uh, just a few things to talk about. We'll get to Andrew Ellis here in a minute, and he's going to go over all the baseball stuff. You guys listen to me try to talk about baseball yes I'll watch the games I'll follow them I'm just I'm not an expert on it Andrew is he knows what's going on and we're going to get to him for a little bit more insight just real quick though on how to watch for tonight's game Arkansas Razorbacks are 44 and 19 18 and 12 in the SEC versus Ole Miss which is 38 and 22 14 and 16 SEC today's Monday June 20th 2022 6 p.m central daylight time at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha and the game is on ESPN, or you can stream it, obviously. Arkansas currently winners uh, leading for the uh, Jello Shot Challenge. That's important also. It'll be interesting to see those numbers today. All right, but that's all your how to watch information on today's game. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, who's going to be the starting pitcher. There's a lot of information on that. You can read all this on hogsports.com, the injury updates, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some good content from Andrew and our national team, Robbie Weinstein, also uh, on on all that stuff. But I'm going to get to football stuff first. Lenny's Magazine came out with their all the all the preseason magazines are out. Phil still, I don't think, quite out yet. They had a publishing issue, but uh, Lindy's, I'm sure, Athlon is out. Lindy's uh, top 25 came out. They've got Arkansas at number 13 in the nation. I think that's a fair spot start. Now that kind of seems within the the realm of where most people are ranking Arkansas. Uh, anywhere from right at 25 to I've seen them as high as six. That might be a little more credit than I'm willing to give them right now. I think they're going to have a good team, obviously. But six, that's that's saying a lot. So Arkansas at 13, return of K.J. Jefferson. That's always big. Like I always say this, like you're never going to see Arkansas ranked in the preseason unless they have a returning starter at quarterback and they had a good season the year before. That's it. There, nobody's ever going to say – it's out of the blue. Well, Arkansas, they only won five games last year, but I'm going to I'm gonna give them a preseason ranking in the top 25. You see that with, like, Nebraska. Nebraska hasn't done anything. They get preseason top 25 rankings. You see other teams do that. But Arkansas, it's always they need a returning starting quarterback and they need to have been ranked in, uh, previously. There's a lot to like about this Arkansas team, obviously. I think it's a big team. I just think they've got a lot going on, really. I mean – I like that they have all the coordinators back. Pittman's back, obviously, for his third year. KJ's back. Four starters on the offensive line. Best two running backs. Some talent at wide receiver, albeit unproven. Filled some holes in, on defense. I like where special teams is right now. 
give Scott Fountain some some credit. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, there was a an article from 24-7 Sports that breaks down literally the biggest impact transfer for every team and for every Power 5 team, so 65 teams. I guess they probably included BYU and, and Notre Dame, so 67 teams. Uh, but for Arkansas, it's Drew Sanders. You could go with a lot of people here. You could go with McLeathern's very important, I think, as a cornerback. I mean, they're a little thin there. So McLeathern's very important. Uh, Brini could be when it's all said and done, even though he never was a starter. In, in spring football. Uh, Jaden Hazelwood, a big addition, obviously. I mean, so there's there's some big additions for Arkansas out of the transfer portal. But Drew Sanders is probably going to start at linebacker, almost certainly going to start at linebacker. Last year, starting linebackers, the trio had – each of them had 100 tackles. Bumper pool led with 125. I think Hayden Henry and Grant Morgan both had right at 100. So, odds are Drew Sanders is going to get 100 tackles this year. So, that's a pretty easy pick. I mean, Jaden Hazelwood – Probably going to be the go-to wide receiver. But, you know, is he going to put up Traylon Burke's numbers? We don't know. But Drew Sanders, if he stays healthy, almost certainly going to get 100 tackles next year. So, that's probably a pretty easy pick. Probably a pretty easy pick. So, Arkansas recently also welcomed the remaining eight scholarship newcomers. That's Nico Davillier. I'm not even sure if that's saying it right. Samuel Bakke with the silent M. Patrick Kudis. Isaiah Satania. Isaiah Satania being a big one. Jordan Dominic. Those are the high school guys. And then you got Jordan Dominic, the Georgia Tech defensive end. Terry Hampton, the transfer from Arkansas State, defensive tackle. Matt Landers, transfer from Toledo, wide receiver. Taylor Lewis, Juco transfer. Out of College of the Canyon, 6'3", 295. That was a nice addition for him late uh, to get him uh, to get him in. So those are the, all the, the eight remaining guys for the football team that are uh, that are enrolled. They're all going through uh, summer workouts. And the good thing about workouts now versus a few years ago is coaches can work with them a couple hours during the week, during the summer. So that's a big benefit. If you're a freshman coming in late, and obviously they had 16 scholarship freshmen enroll early, which is, I guess, unheard of at Arkansas. Uh, but if you're a freshman coming in late, when you start fall camp, it's really you're just kind of picking up. You're expected to know everything and just go because, hey, we're preparing for the season. This isn't like going back and learning a bunch of stuff. You're preparing for the season. So the fact that the coaches can work with these guys in the summer and it's not just the strength staff uh, is going to be a big benefit. I can remember a player telling me years ago, you know, because uh, he was a freshman and just kind of thrown into the fire in the fall. When he went through his first spring, it's like, man, we wipe out everything. We start from scratch. You know, you get to learn from the beginning and just start the building blocks versus fall camp. You just you just start right away. So uh, it's a big advantage for them to be able to work with the coaches and stuff uh, during this eight-week cycle. And, you know, I asked Sam Pittman about it. Like, what's what's the goal for this cycle? What's the Because it's always been about getting bigger. And now, it's, you know, it's a lot of mental stuff. Obviously, you want to continue to get stronger and all that stuff. And there's guys, you know, younger guys that are going to continue to do that. But Arkansas is a big team. They're big. They're fast. They're experienced. So, it's just about getting more mentally tough, more tightly bonded. All of those things are very important, obviously. Switching over to basketball real quick, Ron Holland released his top five. Actually, it's a top four because NBA G League is an option, but Arkansas, Kentucky, UCLA, and Texas. So for those who aren't familiar with him, class of 2023, 6'8", 195-pound forward, number nine ranked player in the country on the 24-7 sports composite ranking, number four power forward, number one in Texas from Duncanville High School. If that sounds familiar, same high school as Anthony Black. So there is a connection there. I think a lot of us think Anthony Black is a one and done. I certainly do. Really intrigued with him. Really intrigued. But uh, anyway, that's good news, Arkansas. Um, you know, when you talk about him, Layden Block or some other guys. Uh, you know, I, we talked to Eric Musselman. Curtis Wilkerson's on his bachelor party, so I went to the basketball press conference. Uh, but we talked to Eric Musselman. Um, when was that? Last week sometime. I can't even remember. Um, but anyway, you know, you've got all the, all, the, all the newcomers are enrolled now. Anthony Black was the last one. They've gone through about 10 practices this summer also. Um, I really love what he said about Anthony Black because Anthony Black was under, eight, was under 18 at the 
Tournament of Americas or whatever in Tijuana. They won the gold medal. So he was just there for one practice. He just had one practice at the time we talked to Musselman, and he's probably had two or three since then. But he just had one. Six, seven, 190 pounds, uh, point guard, going to start at point guard for Arkansas most likely this year. Uh, but what he, what I loved what he said about Black was he's already asking about the third option and stuff. Like, they've got guys that have been there going through practices that are still wondering about, like, the second option in a certain set, you know, and he's asking about the third option. And what he said about him that I also loved was how much other players are going to love playing with Anthony Black. That's very important. I mean, the, from a chemistry standpoint, I mean, he's a distributor. He's six seven a, again, you know. I really like – obviously, you like Nick Smith Jr. I mean, he's a stud. I mean, he's going to be a superstar at Arkansas next year. Jordan Walsh, too, has so much potential. Uh, I also love what he said about this team is going to be really difficult to score on. Just, you know, they it's not like they're doing five-on-five five stuff. They're working on footwork and fundamentals and stuff. Uh, but the length of this team, the rim protection of this team is, is going to be something that really stands out. I mean, you know, j- just beyond, like – you got a six seven point guard. You're going to be a very tall team just from from having a six seven point guard. Nick Smith goes about six four. Jordan Wall six seven. Can play the three or the four. The big thing for them right now is going to is teaching them to be able to switch to cover all positions, including the five. So once they get that down with the new guys, then they're going to feel pretty good. But it sounds like this is going to be a really strong defensive team. Um, you know, you've already got guys like Devonte Davis who are strong, but then you're adding, you know. Um, you're adding the twins, Jalen Graham, who's got some length, Trevon Brazil, um, Ricky Council, who can jump out of the gym. You know, he's he's also another guy that's uh, should be really strong on defense. So all that stuff, I think, is really intriguing. And, you know, not that Arkansas wasn't a good defensive team. You know, also another thing, switching to, you know, the offensive side, like Arkansas was like 320 out of 350 schools in three-point shooting last year. That number's about to really improve, really improve uh, this season. So they're, they're going to end up being one of the better shooting teams, I think, uh, in the country when all said and done. And it sounds like one of the best defensive teams. And this is a team that I think has a shot, has a shot to win it all, even without Jalen Williams, which is disappointing. But good luck to Jalen. He's going to get drafted, you know, following his dream. And that's important, too. I mean, showing guys that you have players drafted. I mean, in Musselman's last couple of years now, you know, you're going to have – or three years, I guess, you're going to have players drafted. So it's important to be able to show that. Uh, the schedule for the foreign tour in Spain and Italy has been released also. That was last week. I thought Musselman made a really good point on this too because, first of all, this is August. So August 9th is when they start playing basketball games. So remember how long it took last year for the team to gel with so many new faces? This is 11 new faces and only two returning guys from last year's team. So it took them a while to start figuring everything out, getting comfortable. For a while, we just didn't think it was going to happen, and then they pull it together and make an Elite Eight run. But now they get to start off in August playing games. And in addition to that, they get 10 practices. So not just playing these games, they get 10 practices before that. So that's going to be a real big benefit in, in speeding up the process for those guys getting more comfortable playing each other. Game one, August 9th in Valencia. Let's see, they're departing Fayetteville on August 6th, and they arrive in Spain on August 7th. So game one, uh, August 9th in Valencia. Then they take a bus to Madrid on August 10th. And game two is August 11th in Madrid. And then they play again in Madrid on August 12th. Then they fly to Milan in Italy, obviously, and play on August 13th. So this is back-to-back-to-back. Then uh, game four, August 14th, Lake Como in Italy, and then return to Fayetteville on August 16th as a bonded team. I mean, like a trip like this, the traveling, the time you just spent talking, getting to know each other more, I mean, all this kind of stuff is uh, going to be really good for, for, for bonding, team building, all that stuff. We know they have the talent and stuff. So um, also playing Baylor, I think that's January – Sometime in January, I can't remember, or late January, uh, January 28th. They play Baylor in Waco in the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Um, there's the Maui Invitational. They play Oklahoma and Tulsa. I mean, there's it's going to be a tough schedule this year. And, you know, they're not going. it's not going to be a schedule like where we try to build people's confidence by playing, you know, softer opponents and stuff like that. They're going to play some tough teams next season, so – College Basketball Portal 6 Boomer Bust Candidates. This is by Isaac Trotter. 
I thought this was pretty good, includes Jalen Graham of Arkansas. Boom or bust. Could be big for him, could be, could not be big, <laughs> I guess. Um, basically, it's, uh, it, it's, it's whether or not they will let him, let's see, uh, Arizona State loved to isolate Graham in the mid post and let him go to work with a flurry of moves. He catched it at the elbow spin, face up, and then unleashed a mid-range floater. Uh, so it's basically whether or not Arkansas is going to let him do that kind of stuff or not. I, th- I just think this guy has so much potential. Uh, I don't think he was used to his full ability. He's got a smooth stroke, 9, 9.9 points, 4.6 rebounds, 1.7 assists. I just think he's got a lot of potential. I think he's going to end up starting for Arkansas. One of the guys that I would say I'm excited about for the for the team next year. What else did Musselman talk about? I think we pretty much covered it, but I thought it was interesting also. We talked to Ricky Council also. You know, he's just talking about uh, some of the things that they're doing at Arkansas, like weight program, for example, just things that they never even thought about doing at Wichita State. I thought it was pretty cool to hear just, wow, like we never did this kind of stuff. So, all right. Where do we want to go now? Let's go to Andrew Ellis. So, again, Andrew Ellis has been with us for nine, ten months, I guess since August, um, and has done a great job. He, he started off as an intern. We It's hard to find good people. And once we realized that Andrew was going to be a guy that's going to, you know, bust it and get the job done, uh, we decided to, to make him full-time. He is in Omaha, Nebraska right now. Um, and let's see, where is Andrew? New guy, so all right, here we go. Omaha, Nebraska, right now covering the team. You may have read his content on Hog Sports and uh, does a great job. Andrew, hey, what's going on? it's going good, man. How are you doing? And how's Omaha? Omaha's hot, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> we're uh, we're having fun here. Is it we're humid there? Or is it just is it just dry heat? It's every type of heat you can imagine. It's about <laughs> 500 degrees outside, but yeah. I'm really thankful that Arkansas is playing the night game tonight. Yeah, even I'll be up in the press box either way. That should be good. Yeah, I was in uh, Vegas last week. That's why we didn't have the show. And that's what I was telling everybody. It felt like it wasn't humid, but it felt like I was walking around with a hair dryer on me, like somebody was just blowing a hair dryer on me. And it's even hotter for the players on the field. What What have you learned? What do we expect tonight? Do you know anything about uh, starting pitcher tonight and um, and for both teams really? Yeah, so they announced – Arkansas announced Zach Morris is going to start tonight, junior left-handed pitcher, who is going to make his second career start. But he's thrown well for him all year, has a sub-2 ERA, actually made his first career start in the regional final in Stillwater. And so he's a reliable arm for him, but he hasn't thrown more than three and a third in any start in his – or any outing in his Arkansas career. So we'll see how long he goes. But I think that they have an entire bullpen ready to go. So I wouldn't anticipate his start being – entirely too long i don't think they're going to try to stretch him out for six or seven innings but mm. you know good reliable arm for him almost has really struggled against left-handed pitching so a little bit of a surprise i think a lot of us thought that will mcintyre was going to be the guy to get the nod he pitched really well last week in chapel Hill, but you know we'll see how morris does and uh i think we'll see evan taylor and uh hagan smith potentially pretty early in the game well a great showing last uh last game against stanford uh by connor nolan only one strikeout but his pitch count i always follow the pitch count i like to you know like what's a good number of pitches for an inning 15 or something like that but i mean it was remarkable i think he was in the eighth inning and he had 68 pitches <laughs> when it, before he came out so um a, a great showing by by connor nolan um what about what about Ole Miss? What do we what do we expect out of this Ole Miss team? Well, so they have uh, freshman Hunter Elliott on the mound, another left-handed arm who Arkansas saw in Fayetteville back in April. Mm-hmm. Has been really really good in the postseason. I believe his ERA is around 0.72 right now, and he's just just absolutely shoving in the postseason. And uh, you know, really both their starting pitchers have been really good. I think they've given up one run in their last three games total. So the entire pitching staffs really come together and. Like Arkansas, they got a really good start in their first game Saturday from their ace to Lucia. So their entire bullpen is ready to go. You know, it should be should be a fun one. I don't think it's going to be as high scoring as a lot of these games have been in Omaha. Mm-hmm. But uh, Ole Miss is really, I mean, they're as hot as anyone right now. Hasn't hasn't lost a game in the NCAA tournament. I think they're outscoring opponents like 51 to 12 or somewhere in that range. I mean, so, uh, the, you know, these two teams, you know, had a really good series in April back in, Ar- back in Arkansas, but... You know, Ole Miss is a different team, and Arkansas is a different team, for that matter. 
I mean, when we look at this Arkansas team, I mean, they were – everybody was kind of down on – or expecting more, I should say, expecting more throughout the season. And then they finished the regular season pretty poorly and then uh, didn't win a game in the SEC tournament. And we, I guess, all forgot that the SEC tournament is really meaningless for most teams in the SEC. Uh, and what, what has changed for these guys? I mean, it's just like they turned the light switch on. What 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 is what has changed about this Arkansas team from uh, the way things were finishing out in the in the regular season to now? Well, it's really weird. I, you know, I, I don't know if anything changed as much as this is just kind of how these how baseball goes sometimes. And mm-hmm. Ben Horn had some interesting comments early in the year about wanting to pace themselves and not wanting to peak too early, and he used a lot of terms like that. And he even said there's some coaches around the team who they might their teams might be peaking too early, and they kind of know it. I don't think he was taking shots at, you know, anyone around the SEC or anything, but I think this is something that Dave Van Horn is aware of. You know, he doesn't want his team to peak too early, especially after last year. I mean, that team was unreal all season, and, you know, we saw that turned out. So I think that they kind of just kept it cool all year long, didn't get too high, didn't get too low. And, you know, I think this team just some, – some, something clicked at some point. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're really, they're really on a roll right now. And this is what we kind of knew this team was capable of, and – we saw flashes of it throughout the year, but really the lineup especially, like you said, we were all kind of wondering when this was going to happen. And for a while it didn't look like it was ever going to happen, but it's definitely happening now and could not be a better time. Do you, do you think Tennessee peaked too early? You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to say whether or not they did, but they're not here. So, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> so – Tonight's game. How do you how do you think things are playing out? Baseball's so tough. The best team doesn't always win. That's that's one thing that I have a hard time with with baseball because I freaking I hate losing. Like I can't stand it, you know, in anything. <laughs> and in baseball, you just you lose so often. You know, it's just it's just a difficult sport. Um, so many nuances. What do you, how do you see the game playing out? I know it's a difficult difficult thing to call for one game in baseball. Well, you know, like I said earlier, I don't think this is going to be as high scoring as some of these games in Hoover have been. And uh, I definitely don't see Arkansas scoring 17 runs again. And, you know, Stanford kind of threw some arms that they wouldn't usually use, and the game kind of got away from them there. But I think this one's going to be tight. I mean, Hunter Elliott's a really good arm. Arkansas is going to have to fight for every run they get off of him. And, you know, obviously Arkansas had their struggles against left handed pitching, but Ole Miss has had their struggles against left handed pitching as well. I believe they're almost 50 points lower against lefties. So. I believe Morris is going to be huge for Arkansas, and I think they have their entire bullpen ready to go. So the leash on Morris won't be long because if he starts struggling, they have Mm -hmm. everyone ready to go, Evan Taylor, Brady Tiger, Hagen Smith. I mean, so I think both teams are kind of in a good spot with their pitching. And so I expect it to be tight throughout. We really haven't seen a ton of close games here in Omaha. I believe Mm -hmm. Oklahoma won 6-2 yesterday, but a lot of these games have kind of gotten away from one team or the other or, Kind of make, one team makes a run late, but I think this one will be tight throughout. Should be an awesome atmosphere. I mean, yeah. both of these fan bases have really showed up in Omaha. I mean, we've all been seeing the Jello shot counter. I mean, mm-hmm. both of these fan bases are crazy, and, and it's going to be hot, but it will be a night game, so it won't be too hot to completely exhaust everyone. I think it's going to be awesome. It's just going to be one of those awesome nights for college baseball. And, you know, I, I said in my preview, I just don't see a way Ole Miss sweeps their way through this NCAA tournament. I mean, mm-hmm. they've won, I believe, six straight now. And so that's why I went with the Hogs. I had the Hogs winning six to three, or I believe five to three actually. And I think I'm going to stick somewhere in that range. I think it's going to be a low scoring game, but I think Arkansas is going to come out on top. If they can get a lead going into the sixth, seventh inning, turn it over to that bullpen, they'll be feeling good. Have you uh, have you contributed to the uh, Arkansas shot total, uh, <laughs> Jello shot total, Andrew? Have you? Uh... I, I have not contributed. Uh, <laughs> you know, a group of us walked by Rocco's the other day, and the uh-huh. line was just crazy and. So we, we, we just decided to let it let it uh, you know let someone else take care of it and they have done that. That's a great marketing ploy by them to make it a competition. Four fifty a shot. A shot. They, have, unbelievable. they have. They have. I haven't seen. What's the latest total? I haven't seen the latest total on that. I don't. I know they broke the record last. Yeah, night the last the one was right above it, where it was Mississippi State's record, and they had to put a little sign over it to be like to be determined because yeah. they're going to have a new record and you know. I mean, it's going to come down to whoever stays in the longest, you know, between basically Arkansas and Ole Miss. Arkansas, last check, was at 3,416, and Ole Miss was at 2,763. And I assume Mississippi State won last year, and, you know, they made it through the whole tournament. So, you know, this is yeah, this mean, is pretty early. <laughs> yeah, Mississippi State set that record 
um, in a 10 day, 10 to 12 day stretch. And yeah. Arkansas fans took care of that in about four. So they, I think they're not going to slow down. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Arkansas gets eliminated and a few fans stick around and still take a few shots. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's absolutely possible, but I uh, also don't think that's going to happen. I think Arkansas, Arkansas, feel, it feels like this might be the team, the year. I mean, like, Everybody says last year's team was better and all this stuff, but that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. I mean, in baseball, just you know, sometimes sometimes the team you don't expect is the the team that gets it done. And, and Arkansas feels like they're uh, hotter than yeah, anybody I, I right agree. now. I agree. I think you know, th- there's a good feeling with this team right now. And really, I mean, all the teams here in Omaha are all they all entered with a ton of confidence. Mm-hmm. Texas is a team that I, I was really high on, and they're the first team going home. I mean, yeah. the competition is so stiff, but. All of these teams are talented. All of these teams are playing well, and you know it's going to be interesting. Tonight is an absolutely huge one, mm. and uh, I, you know I was telling people I think that if they, Arkansas were to win the national title, they had to win that first game against yeah. Stanford, and they passed that test about as easily as you could. So this is another huge one. Could put themselves really in the driver's seat on their side of the bracket, and you know if you get to the final, I feel like Arkansas is going to be feeling good. I mean, it's going to be hard to beat any of these teams two times and so yeah Arkansas, Arkansas got to be feeling pretty good about themselves but yeah tonight's an absolutely massive one yeah the stats show I mean that you almost have to win that first game if you're going to win it all um so all right Andrew anything else to add before we let you go I think I think I'm all good here I think you We're nailed it appreciate you I think you nailed it all right Andrew appreciate you brother all right, everybody, that's Andrew Ellis. Again, Andrew is the new guy at hogsports.com, does a fantastic job covering Razorback baseball. He's covered basketball all season long, covered uh, football for us, uh, just has done a great job, does other things behind the scenes that you don't you don't always see on the front page. But uh, you can follow Andrew at Andrew Ellis 247 on Twitter. Uh, he's a great follow this time of year, obviously, with, with everything going on with baseball. All right, we're going to get to Danny West next. Danny has been busy. He did not get to enjoy his Father's Day because there was a commitment. There was a lot of other stuff going on with Razorback football uh, camps, visitors, all that kind of stuff. So he had a late, late Father's Day. I think he said he hit the pool at about seven. Danny, how you doing, brother? What's up, man? I was just telling everybody you you had a great Father's Day. You just you didn't have to do anything. You just sat back and enjoyed yeah. yourself, right? <laughs> annual tradition around here buddy <laughs> well um happy belated father's day to you but uh thank you sir there was thank at least a, there was at least a, we'll start with the commitment arkansas got a defensive back commitment only the second in the class uh from one of the official visitors on on uh over the weekend yeah christian ford uh six foot 185 safety out of mckinney texas and uh obviously plays for marcus shavers so mm-hmm. uh, i seem to remember a story involving you and Marcus Shavers a long time ago. Yeah. Trey, you wanna, what happened there, man? <laughs> uh, yeah, so this would have been about 2006, seven or so yeah. when Shavers yeah. at Arkansas. And I wrote, he left the field, he had cramps. <laughs> but I, I, I wrote, he left the field with craps. Yep. Yeah. yeah that happened. <laughs> I remember it. I don't think, I mean, yesterday. that's something I heard about for years and years and years after that. So that's, yeah. that's what you get for a, for a little typo. Well, it looks like he got over it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I think he got over the crap. Okay, and I, hey, that's a pretty good job, McKinney, Texas, man. We, I think people ought to be proud of Coach Shavers. But mm-hmm. yeah, uh, going back to Ford, I saw him last week. I uh, liked his film quite a bit. He's not huge, mm-hmm. but you know he's physical. I thought he was instinctive, and, and I think he's got the potential. I, I see why they like him. I'll put yeah. it that way. You know, he hasn't been evaluated yet by 24 7 but i think that's that's in the works who else was in on him uh, yeah he had quite a few uh, to be honest with you um you know some of the texas schools texas tech was in there for uh for christian i'm pulling up his list here you know washington state arizona state a lot of pac-12 flavor uh, mm-hmm. colorado was in there nebraska uh, tcu as i said one of the texas schools i think minnesota so uh you know, that's a pretty solid offer list, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Illinois, Coach B offered him. But, uh, yeah, uh, not sure exactly where he's going to fall in the rankings, but uh, my guess would be a mid- to high-range three-star. That's just my guess. But uh, pretty solid pick. I, I think they like his uh, versatility. He's probably a guy who could play corner or safety, and uh, you see a lot of safety on film. So mm-hmm. really physical guy, really good kid, too. But, um yeah, uh, that, w- that was obviously a, a good momentum get. 
And then, of course, we'll see what happens with guys like Jalen Braxton, four-star corner. Really interesting situation going on there, Trey. Kid out of Frisco, Texas, Lone mm-hmm. Star, committed to Michigan State just six days ago. Mm-hmm. So uh, by the time he arrived on Friday in Fayetteville, he had all you know he had been committed for what three days or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, and now suddenly it feels like everything's trending in Arkansas's direction suddenly. So. That would be a big time get a four star corner out of Frisco. Uh, you take those all day, but he's six foot one seventy. We'll see what happens there, but I'm starting to really, really like Arkansas's chances at, at flipping this guy. And then of course, uh, you had Ian Jaffrard, six six three fifty. I don't know if he's big enough, but uh, he's plenty out big. Of Mableton, yeah, he's plenty big. But uh, out of Whitefield Academy down in Mableton, uh, Mableton, Georgia. You know, he told us yesterday, Trey, that uh, Auburn is still my top school, but Arkansas has made up ground. And mm-hmm. then suddenly this morning he announces, I'm going to make a decision tonight at 6 o'clock. So very, very interesting coming out of a visit. You know, he initially said that he thought about making a final decision in October. So it seems like this thing is, has been expedited quite a bit. So mm-hmm. be on the lookout this evening i guess that would be five o'clock and they like him at defensive tackle six six three fifty dt yeah Yeah. and if it doesn't work out there ot for those who don't know like the difference a lot of times with an offensive lineman and defensive lineman a defensive lineman will usually have a little bit quicker you got to have that quick twitch muscle fiber to play defensive Mm -hmm. line so if he's got that i guess then then they like him at that spot and uh, they'll figure it out when they they get in there but get six six three fifty to campus you know with auburn being a competitor I'm not saying I'm not worried about Auburn because, I mean, obviously Auburn recruits at a very high level. they got a lot to offer. But there's just so much off-season turmoil with them. I just yeah. wonder if he doesn't have – if Brian Harson doesn't have success this season, you know, that staff could be in a lot of trouble. And, you know, so you might not – I don't know. I give them a 50-50 at best that that staff is there after the, the end of the season. They, I'm with you, dude. So. The feeling is in the air. At yeah. Auburn, it, it certainly seems like. But, yeah, unique uh, sales job for Arkansas on this one. You know, it's really tough. And, and again, I go back to my study about a month ago now. For yeah, defensive I loved it. And why it's, yeah. it's, it's so difficult to find these guys. Well, when you get a guy like this who plays both ways in high school, he's 6'6", 350, as you said. Mm-hmm. Those aren't just walking around everywhere. It, it's really tough for Arkansas to attract those guys, and they're doing so well on the offensive line. I'm not sure – they would even have a spot for him offensively. Mm-hmm. But, boy, he'd sure be nice to have on defense, wouldn't he? Yeah. You think about Ridgeway being able to stand people up, take on double teams, and let the linebackers do all the work. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what they've got in mind here. And, you know, if, if it doesn't work out, you still got a 6'6", 350 guy who can flip back over and, and play whatever you wanted. So, You know um, what stood out to me about that study that you did, Danny, was I didn't know this, but uh, only 8% of American males are – Six three or taller, only only eight percent. I remember um, when I was in college, there was this girl that uh, she felt like she was too tall to date a shorter guy, and she felt like you know she was looking for a guy that was like six three. She felt like she would look too tall next to, and she was looking for a guy that's six three. And now looking back on it, it's like she's narrowing her field to eight percent of the population, (laughs) and then on top of that got to find somebody that you're compatible with in that 8% of the population. So that's yeah, pretty small group. Yeah. Pretty yeah, small, it's, it's pretty small like group. Defensive tackle recruiting. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah, pretty much the same it is a, it is a small group and you got it not only six, three or taller, but you know, you got to find people that uh, have that quick twitch muscle fiber we we're talking about. And yeah. Uh, yeah and, uh, and hell be massive also. I mean, <laughs> there's six, three and skinny out there too. You know, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a gotta, small group of people that can that can play defensive gotta, tackle, right? And you've got to try to get them to your campus. And, yeah. And so often, what I found in that study was, you know, they stay so close to home, mm-hmm. and, and that's the one thing that kind of uh, I don't know uh, concerned if that's the right word, but kind of a red flag yesterday when when Ian was talking about uh, proximity from home. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Mableton is less than two hours away from Auburn. They stay close Arkansas, to home, Danny. But where, yeah, where are these guys being produced? Like, I mean, where, where, where do most of the talent come out of? 
you know? Mostly in the southeast, it yeah. seems like. So Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, Florida, you know, the, those are the schools that are – so that's why they're staying close to home because those are all, that's you know, right. powerhouse schools that are used to recruiting high-level defensive tackles. Yeah, they would have to drive by a lot of SEC options to get to you. So, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it, it's really tough. But moving on real quick, I do want yeah. to mention R.J. Johnson was a, a 6'2", 180 corner mm-hmm. out of uh, Eagles Landing. Uh, I want to say that's McDonough. Georgia. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, man, I told him yesterday, if football doesn't work out for you, you need to be on the radio. Trey, this dude's got a voice now. Oh, is I that mean, right? He, <laughs> he needs to start up a podcast or something. I'm telling <laughs> you, it's one of the most unique voices, really well-spoken, sharp dude. And I'm pulling for him. I don't know if Arkansas is going to be a spot or not. I think Florida is going to be tough to beat, but R.J. Johnson, man, remember that name. Uh, maybe one day he'll hit the portal, if nothing else. But, uh, <laughs> he's a uh, really cool kid. But yeah. Jeremiah Hughes, do want to mention Jeremiah was back. You know, he took a uh, – here's an, another interesting corner, Trey. The dude was born in Palm Bluff, Arkansas, right? Mm-hmm. He lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. Goes to Bishop Gorman, one of the perennial powerhouses in, in high school football. Six foot, uh, 175, maybe six one, but – uh, you know, he's been to Arkansas a few times now. He was last here in April on an unofficial. Uh, mm-hmm. So came a long way to visit some family. Still has plenty of family in northwest Arkansas. And um, came back again with his, his family this weekend and had a really good visit. I think he's headed to LSU right now and going to finish up his week at Utah. So a decision could be coming soon on that one. But, boy, it sure feels like these, these dominoes are starting to fall, especially mm-hmm. in the defensive uh uh, backfield i think we're starting to see quite a few uh, dbs make decisions here in the next couple of weeks i think linebacker is still one to watch mm-hmm. uh, especially with brad spence he visited last week here took a trip this past weekend to cal and i think he's on the verge of making a decision then you're bringing in alex sanford out of oxford mississippi this week as well so uh, a couple of linebackers of note there Arkansas currently ranked number nine nationally uh, with the recruiting class, and we'll see if that changes any when Christian Ford uh, gets a ranking because right now he's listed as as no stars in a on on his ranking. Uh, the the previous uh, last commitment was Isaiah Augustov. Is that how you say it? Running back out of Naples, Florida, six two two hundred. Tell you what I like about this kid. First of all, he he was recently actually bumped up uh, to. Uh, so he's the number 18th ranked running back prospect in the country. Uh, he is the 17th ranked running back prospect in the country as a four star. So he's the highest ranked three star running back in the country on 24 seven sports uh, after his latest uh, re ranking. But 6'2, 200, a 4'5'1 in the 40 yard dash. What I like about him is if it, you know, I th- first of all, I think it's going to work out at running back. He's a hard runner. I like the way he looks on film. But uh, if it doesn't work out at running back, you can do a lot with six two two hundred and a four five. That's right, that's right. And they actually haven't thrown it to him a whole lot in high school, but um, he seems to be a guy that you can do that with. So, um, yeah, I'm with you on that. They offered this kid, and it, it, I want to say April twenty fifth, somewhere around there, and it happened really quickly. He started telling me, hey, "I'm coming up to Arkansas very soon." They got him up for a visit earlier this month, around the fifth or the sixth, and it happened quickly, mm-hmm. buddy. And yeah. So, Really good, uh, smart move for them. I think they were trying to stash him a little bit, Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. I think that was one that they felt really strongly about. You know, they kind of had to wait and see what said Baxter was going to do. Obviously, one of the top 50 players in the country. He's worth waiting on, but this dude's pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. 6'2", I think he checked in around 205 up here. Mm -hmm. So, man, that's a big Big running back for a, a junior. Yeah. But, uh, I'll tell you yeah. what I liked, it, what you said, too. Uh, Arkansas plans to take two running backs in this class or one if they get a guy that they really, really like. And this looks like he's going to be the only one, so that should tell you a lot yeah. about what the staff thinks about him. Yeah. Just this morning I took a couple of uh, previously scheduled official visitors off the off the list this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jordan Louie and, and Javen. Uh, Simpkins out of Florida, a couple of big time guys there too. But Arkansas is, they're more than happy with, with Isaiah. And, and uh, my understanding is he is the only guy. Now, it'd be really tough to try to convince two guys of that caliber to join this room right now. It's mm-hmm. a really deep, really good room. So, um, hey, I'm all for it. I think it makes a lot of sense. 
All right, Danny. Well, I appreciate you hopping on with us. Yeah, man. All right, I feel brother. like I could have spent the next 30 minutes catching up on recruiting here. Been, <laughs> I know. It's been wild. So it's a cr- June. June used to be kind of quiet, except for camps. I'm now you, now so much anymore, going on. But no, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Trey. All right, brother. All right, appreciate you, Danny. You. All, All right, right everybody. That's Danny West. Again, follow Danny at Danny West 247 on Twitter. And you can follow Andrew Ellis. Bump up Andrew Ellis' Twitter follows. He's new with us. He's got a couple thousand on there, but he's Andrew Ellis 247 also. Uh, two of our guys at Hog Sports, Curtis Wilkerson, as I mentioned, uh, bachelor party in Sarasota, Florida. All right. Where are we going now? Let's go to questions. We've gone about 40 minutes. Jacob Botwinick asked for a score prediction for tonight. I think Andrew said 6-3. We'll go with Andrew Ellis's. He knows more than I do about it. Bill Richards, howdy from Texarkana, Arkansas. Can't wait till the Hogs win 11 games this year. I put it out there. I think 9, 10 wins in the regular season is absolutely possible. And we'll see. People will throw this back at me at the end. But, I, again, I just – I like this team. I like the makeup of them. I think they got a shot to do something really special this year. Landon Montgomery says, we need it tonight. Does McIntyre carry us to us to the W? So, then it sounds like it's going to be – Zach Morris, saved by the bell kid. Landon Montgomery says, who's the best team besides Arkansas left in the College World Series? Stanford, I guess. I don't know. Can KJ get his Heisman hunt this year? It might be Ole Miss, actually. Ole Miss and the two best teams might be playing right now, I guess kind of based on what uh, Andrew said. Can KJ get in the Heisman hunt this year from Landon Montgomery? It's possible. With a quarterback – you got to win a lot of games. So if Arkansas doesn't win a lot of games, it doesn't it doesn't matter. That takes me back to the Darren McFadden thing. I've been listening to um, the Darren McFadden stuff on on Hog Pod with Houston Nut and stuff, just about how the Heisman broke down back then, you know. And it just it's it frustrates me going back and thinking about it because um, dude from Ohio State, Troy Smith, was the last guy to go wire for wire. Back then, it was like. The guy that we think is going to win the Heisman at the beginning of the season is the guy that's going to win it at the end. And Troy Smith didn't put up spectacular numbers. Ohio State had a, had a good year, obviously, but he didn't put up spectacular numbers at all, not compared to Darren when you compare a quarterback to a running back and the things that Arkansas did going 7-1 and one in the SEC that year. Um, so that was frustrating, too. And everybody was saying, you know, Darren's too young, too young to win the Heisman and all that kind of stuff. Next year is his year. Uh, and so this is back when nobody – younger than a junior had ever won the Heisman. And then the next year, he puts up ridiculous, even more ridiculous numbers. Uh, but Tim Tebow had a bunch of short touchdown runs. He had 20 touchdown runs, 20-plus maybe. And the thing that stinks about that to me is there's always kind of been a few unwritten rules with the Heisman back then. First of all, you needed to be a junior to win it. And secondly, if you're a quarterback, you needed to win a lot of games. Well, Florida finished third in the East that year, third in the Eastern Division that year, and Tim Tebow won the Heisman as a sophomore. Here's something nobody else ever talks about for some reason. Even though Darren McFadden was a full classification older than Tebow, he was a true junior, Tebow was a true sophomore, Darren McFadden was two weeks younger than Tim Tebow. Tim Tebow was, you know, they held him back a year in school, I guess. Darren McFadden was two weeks younger than Tim Tebow as a junior, and nobody ever made any anything about that. But that was the year that changed things when a younger guy could win the Heisman and we stopped having wire-to-wire guys. If you start the, the season as the Heisman Trophy favorite, then you didn't win it. I think Spencer Rattler was the Heisman Trophy favorite last year. We saw how that win. So, I don't know. I'm going back in time here. But could KJ have a Heisman Trophy run? It's possible they got to win a lot of games. They need to win at least 10 regular season games. Um, He needs to put up probably more passing yards than he did last year and probably keep the same amount of rushing yards, something like that. But the main thing for Arkansas is win a lot of games. And, yeah, he can win the Heisman. He would be the favorite on the team to win the Heisman, I think. Ryan Horn says, above anybody else, like any other skill spot guy, Ryan Horn says, how do you think our wide receiver core will play this year? Do you think we will have enough playmakers at wideout? I think they have more 
top to bottom talent at wide receiver this year. Okay, when you can talk about the guys that they had last year that are a year older now and the guys, you know, coming in like Jaden Hazelwood, uh, Isaiah Satania coming in also. I think like I think Tyson Morris was a good receiver for them last year. Devion Warren did some things that helped him also. But when I look at Keetron Jackson, Warren Thompson, um, Jaden Hazelwood, Isaiah Satania, Bryce Stevens, you know, some of those guys, I just feel like they have as a group more potential. So I think it'll be spread out more than it was last year. But – and it's possible somebody emerges as, a, as the go-to stud. But I, I just think that um, – They've got enough talent. They've recruited enough at that position uh, to have some guys that will step up for them. Will they have a go-to guy that they can throw to and, you know, take a pass to the flats, 90 yards for a touchdown? I don't know that yet. People saying OU, A&M. How many guys from the basketball team do you think will lose after year one to the draft? Anthony Black, Nick Smith, I think. Um, Jordan Walsh is a possibility. But I think those two for sure. Seth Vinson says, do you think Arkansas will make the best of three championships in Omaha? Make it to the best of three championships in Omaha? I mean, right now, excuse me, <laughs> right now it kind of feels like that. John Sullivan says, will those basketball games be televised? I don't know how they're going – if they're going to stream those or what they will do with that. That's a good question, John, and something we need to get to the bottom of. Thank you for asking that, John. We need to we need to find out exactly if those games are – you know, we, we have potential to watch those games. My guess is probably some type of streaming situation for those games. Dennis Mitchell says, my guess, close-range rock fight that isn't decided until the bottom of the ninth. Yeah. It should be a fun game. Pat Graham Frick says, go Hogs, get a Morris. Go get a Morris. Dennis Mitchell says, I predict low scoring, close range rock fight that goes to the bottom. Of the, you, you wrote it twice. Wrote it twice, Dennis Mitchell. Bill Richard says, what time's the game? My prediction is Hogs 6, Ole Miss 3, go Hogs. That's what uh, Andrew Ellis said. The game is at 6 o'clock Central Daylight Time. My football is spamming us. We're going to go ahead and delete you there. Trying to get people to come to his site. Leon R. Hurst says, Hogs 8-3 and three versus Ole Miss. Ole Miss a little better than Stanford on bats was, was at the game versus Stanford. Stanford just looked puzzled. Ole Miss going – it just seemed like at the end it was like everything was just a pop fly. I mean, obviously Connor Nolan – only had one strikeout, but it just seemed like every, they were just kind of gently swinging the bats and just pop fly. All right, let's get this game over with. That's how it looked anyway. Don Eldred says, not sure why I have subtitles on, but they are struggling with Satania. <laughs> Adam Thomas says, what a great time to be a hog. When was the last time baseball, football, and basketball program were top 25 programs? Um, I would argue that – let's see. Never? Maybe. I mean, it feels like – I mean, when you look at it all together, right, baseball teams in the College World Series, they're in the final eight, basically, right? Um, they've had the number five ranked recruiting class in the country coming in. You look at football. Football finished 21st nationally. I've seen them high, ranked as high as six in the preseason. I've seen them at eight in the preseason. They have the number nine ranked recruiting class in the country looking ahead – I think they are number 17 when you consider high school and transfer portal combined rankings for the class that's actually coming in or on campus right now. Uh, and then basketball has the number two ranked recruiting class in the country, number five ranked transfer portal class in the country. I would guess at a hybrid model, they would be number one ranked nationally in that regard and uh, pretty much top five team by everybody. Uh, so maybe – ranked in the top 25 maybe that's happened where all programs were but as far as like the height like being top five you know being in the elite eight being in the college world series um you know being projected for football as high as they are i don't know that that's ever happened 
Aaron Anderson says, is the media making a bigger deal than they should with Traylon Burks making practices? What's the word on that? Seems like it's kind of died down since, uh, you know, people started talking about, hey, dude's got asthma. You know, it went from like, is he lazy? Is he out of shape? To he's got a medical condition. Chill, you know. He's had asthma his whole life. So hopefully, whatever it is that caused the the flare up or something, I don't know a whole lot about asthma, uh, but whatever it is caused the flare up, hopefully they get it settled down. I don't know if it's the air there, or the the heat or what, but I'd never even heard about it until uh, until all that stuff came out. So certainly rooting on Traylon Burks. Uh, a great Razorback. Want him to have a great career, obviously. It's always fun when you get a skill guy in the NFL to follow. And, you know, Traylon Burks has a chance to be special. So, all right, everybody. Sorry it's been so long, two weeks. I mean, it's like I feel like we've been doing the show every two weeks because something comes up, you know, whether it's a, a holiday or uh, we were on vacation last week. We were in Vegas. And um, so it's been a couple of weeks. But uh, certainly plenty to talk about right now with, uh, with all three sports. So exciting time, as many of you have mentioned, to be a Razorback fan. Uh, I want to thank Andrew Ellis for coming on with us for the first time. won't be the last time that we have Andrew Ellis on moving forward. He is now, congratulations, full-time with us at Hog Sports. Uh, so our fourth team member at hogsports.com and, and does a great job. Again, follow him at Andrew Ellis 24-7. And on on, on uh, Twitter, and then of course follow Danny West uh, at Danny West at two four. Excuse me, at Danny West twenty four seven. It's that time of the show. I reach the fifty minute mark, and I start just kind of fading. You know, we don't have like commercial breaks and stuff, so it's like just continuous talking. But uh, follow Danny West at Danny West twenty four seven for all his Razorback football and football recruiting news. Does a great job for us also, and uh, subscribe to the page if you haven't done so already. Let's see what else we got. Facebook Live, throw us a thumbs up. YouTube, throw us a, thumb, a thumbs up. Subscribe to the page if you haven't done so already. Hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we up no, upload new videos. And Apple Podcasts, throw us that five-star review. All right, everybody. We'll be back with you guys next week. I really intend to do that. I know it's been every two weeks, but we're going to get back on the normal schedule. There's just too much going on. Uh, so we'll be back with you guys next week. And, uh, yeah, do all the things that I said. Follow those people and subscribe. All right, everybody. It's been Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time.